No, SAO is not an isekai. And no, it did not start the trend of isekai. This is a annoying, at best, misconception that has been parroted by some of the largest anime creators, including Garnt and Joey on the platform, which has led to a trickle-down effect where a ton of people just mindlessly repeat this, to the point where you can find outside commenters who, upon seeing this being spread online, have taken it at face value and used it in their content, which has spread it even further outside its original sphere of influence. To start off with the first half, this is a somewhat recent case of watering down definitions. Isekai was just another word to mean a story where someone goes to another world, whether it be via reincarnation or transmigration or some other means. This was usually called a portal fantasy before it grew to include more means to getting to another world than just portals. But you can still see this old term used, one place being the English web fiction site Royal Road in combination with the Isekai tag. What was also implied inherently, but not obviously stated, was that this definition meant another real world, not just someone playing a video game, which is the only thing that Kirito did. He never went to another world, all he did was lay down with a VR game device and play something that was being hosted on a server somewhere. This unfortunately seems to be where the issue lies, where some people want to consider digital stuff as constituting an isekai, which essentially will mean that any media that shows a character interacting with a digital land in some form could be falling under the tag. This is kind of annoyingly bloaty and does a very good job at making the label meaningless and thus kind of useless as a tag to search things on their own, which is the huge major problem, especially considering that the genre of isekai is already broad enough as it is, being able to reference something either going to another planet in the same universe, someone going to another universe standard fantasy world, etc. Something I try and address via my own more specific categorization of what an isekai should entail in my prior video, but the case in all of those examples is that those are real worlds. Which brings me to another aspect of why it shouldn't be added to the mix like this. The average actual enjoyer of Isekai does not want to be reading bog standard VR MMO stuff or even regular stories about people playing games because they do not want to read about a game world that they feel does not matter due to it not being real. If someone wants, for example, full dive stuff, they will search up the common, but someone niche tag of VR MMO. Do not mistake someone enjoying some game elements in an Isekai like stats for meaning they are okay with having to sort through results of stuff that doesn't actually involve another actual world. The average person, if they want an isekai, are not thinking of SAO, but instead Log Horizon or some other of the plethora of stories of MCs being transported to an alternate universe world that resembles the old VR MMO game they used to play, which SAO granted did help somewhat popularize. VR MMO stories, that is. What it did not do, however, was start isekai in the modern Japanese market. This is even more annoying because unlike the previous topic, which you could argue and have some people say they just have different subjective standards and definitions, yada yada yada, this one is just objectively bullshit which makes it all the more infuriating to hear repeated. To summarize briefly, Isekai was already popping off at the time that SAO aired, and SAO has no grounds to stand on to claim it had such a positive effect for it. This take is even reposted on the Wikipedia article of Isekai, quote, The 2012 anime adaptation of Sword Art Online popularized the Isekai genre in anime, which led to more Isekai web novels being published on Naro, and a number of Naro novels being adapted into anime. It was around this time that the term isekai was coined, and gives a neat little link to an article to back up this statement. Lo and behold, reading the article in question stated neither of these two things. Me when I spread misinformation on the internet. The article only stated that SAO brought more attention to the web novel site as a whole, both by readers who likely wanted more things with things like SAO, and by authors who realized it was a possible alternative path to success outside the usual means. It also made no mention of the specific time when the term isekai was produced. A little side treat that I found mentioned and linked in the article is that the author of SAO himself does not believe SAO to be an isekai. He explicitly calls it, according to Deeple, a real world work, 
and that he's had to explain this numerous times in interviews. I'm feeling like a teacher having to sit and point out to the class the numerous examples why Wikipedia shouldn't be trusted at face value, even with so-called sources linked. But something that is talked about in the wiki article thankfully, but gone into more detail in the article is the actual origins of the modern surge in isekai in Japan. And that is a little known isekai series that is called The Familiar of Zero that aired back in the mid 2000s. It went on to become massively popular on the Naro website for years and was pretty much the reason Isekai came to be in the Japan market, especially after Naro went original fiction only. But even way before then, people were already doing original Isekai content before they banned fan fiction off their site. This didn't just stay in the web novel market as well. All one has to do is open up Analyst and search for Isekai tagged anime that came out in 2010, 2011, and 2012, and one will see a ramp up, a ramp up that was there before SAO dropped. 2010 didn't have any except for that Hinako thing, which we shall not speak of. 2011 had Astaroth's Toy, Dog Days, and Battle Girls, Time Paradox, and 2012 had the familiar of Zero F, the ambition of Oda Nobuna, Drifters, OVA, Dog Days Season 2, Aesthetica of Rogue Hero, and Sengoku Collection. I can also at bare minimum include shows from 2013 up to the end of summer or maybe the end of fall as they would have been in production before SAO really kicked off in the hype popularity time at what Google Trend shows peaked around December of 2012. So add on to the list, The Devil is a Part-Timer, Gargantia on the Virtuous Planet, Problem Children are Coming from Another World, and maybe Log Horizon since LH was announced at the start of 2013 and considering they had 25 episodes, leads me to believe that they had started working on this before SAO reached peak popularity as well. This evidence of pre-existing trends becomes even more apparent when you take a look at the manga and light novel side during those years as well. 2010 had the Alice in Borderland manga and the Log Horizon and Aesthetica of a Rogue Hero light novels. 2011 had the light novel and manga of The Devil is a Part-Timer, The Problem Children Are Coming from Another World LN, The Sukai No Eve manga, Outbreak Company LN, Kuro no Maui LN, RPG World, Roleplay World manga, and maybe the Love and Hell manga if you consider just going to hell at Isekai. As for 2012, for light novels that started there was Overlord, No Game, No Life, Isekai, Miku, D Harum, Wo, Remonster, The Ideal Sponger Life, Dungeon Dive, Aim for the Deepest Level, Isekai de Cafe, Wo Keten Shimashida, Sky World, and World Customized Creator. As for manga, there was Kona Elf Ni Waiyu Shao, Cho Kaudao Girl 1-6, Log Horizon, Outbreak Company, and more Problem Children. In every single area you choose to look at, whether it be light novels, manga, or anime, they all show that Isekai was there and growing. This belief that SAO started the Isekai genre slash trend is complete bullshit and is disproven by every single metric. Isekai was already popping off. The most you could say on SAO's impact was that there was more stories that have a VR MMO tint than there would have been without it.